Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. Amen, amen. But God, God will give you the strength. He will give you the strength to make it through your journey. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for my mom. Lost my dad. Thank God for my mom. Amen. But I, you know, I still miss my dad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, as we get get um get ourselves going in today's uh, lesson, we are still. Well, y'all know we we do a series for the year. We're still in James four and seven. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. That devil. There, there. It's not a one-time resist. It's a continual lifetime of resistance of the devil. And you may have it down, packed in one area, but make no mistake, or or, or don't think it's strange when he comes to try to get you in another area. Amen? Amen. But but the same strength that you had to resist that devil uh, uh, in in one area, you, you got the same strength to resist him again. And you have the same power to be successful again. We know that Galatians 5 and 17, it says a sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. The spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. And these two forces are constantly fighting each other. Uh, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But, but when, when I say that the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires, if we go down to uh, Philippians 2 or 13, which we added last week, this is a compound thing. You know, when you begin learning in one area, the Bible continues to agree with itself. And in, in Philippians 2 and 13, the Bible says, for God, who is spirit and the, and the Holy Spirit uh, is within us, is working in you giving you the desires and the power to do what pleases him. And so you don't have to try to figure it out. Um, you know, you just have to make sure you keep yourself filled with the spirit of God. And he will continue to give you desires that are pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, when you begin to say, you know what, this is this, this doesn't feel right, you know. This I know the women women have been talking about the last month or so talking about modesty. Hallelujah. Those, those that that that's that's coming from the Lord. Amen. The God is the Bible says God is working in you, giving you the desires and the power to do what pleases him, not what pleases you. The answer to some people is well, I can wear what I what I what I what I what I want to. Y'all hear that eye, y'all. Yeah. But 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 the spirit is not giving you desires to have anything to do with what you want to do. The spirit is giving you desires to do and the power to do what pleases God. And that's when you you know you fight yourself. You think you're fighting uh, uh, sister so and so or somebody in the church, and and, and you know. I, <laughs> It really get on my nerves. Like, wait, the men they should just c- control themselves. Really? That's your answer to love your neighbor as yourself. That they need to control their own self and their own eyes. And I can wear whatever I want to wear. Why don't you talk to God? Why don't you talk to the Holy Spirit? Oh, praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. That was my that was my two cents to y'all lesson yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we're constantly use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Because we got a lot of false arguments that we create ourselves to try to tell ourselves that we're right when we're wrong. When the Bible says shun the very appearance of evil, the appearance of evil may not even be sin, but you're still supposed to shun it. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
So today we're looking at, in terms of the submission to God, how, how must we submit to God and resist the devil in the music we listen to? Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Submit your music to God. The Bible encourages us to use music as a means of expressing worship and praise and thanksgiving to God. You look at it, music has always been recognized in the world, in the word of God, as a powerful way to connect with God and to show our devotion to him. As far back as Psalm uh, 150, the word of God says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his, in, in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbal. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that have that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Music was designed to praise God. And 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 you know, I, I wanted I wanted so bad to talk about uh, uh, the devil being the head of the choir and 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 you know, but I couldn't find that in the Bible. I'm sorry. One of y'all work on that and find that in the Bible, but I couldn't find it. I, I, I that he was the head musician, and I was going, I was going to use all that, but I couldn't find a scripture that said. It. But anyway, but 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 it sounds good. But but music, uh, uh, um, when we think about music, we have the ability to determine for ourselves the music style we can listen to. You can decide what you think. You want to listen to country, you want to listen to rock, you want to listen to whatever you want to listen to. But, 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 but the key is praising God. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible do I, do I, does it give us an intermission to praise somebody else other than God. To believe that we have the right to expose ourselves to any kind of music content is a lie that believers tell ourselves. It's a lie. We tell ourselves, well, I can, that ain't, that ain't, ain't no harm in listening to this, and there's no harm in, in listening to that. But let's look at 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can, that can that can defile our body or spirit and let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. There are, there are things that we listen to that can defile our spirit. And why would we even want to take the chance if we're working toward complete holiness or complete separation from the rest of the world? We know Romans 12, 1 and 2, and, and, so, and, and dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of, of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind that will be acceptable. This is the true, is this is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. If, if this is the case, your music content must always be pleasing to God. Your music content must always be pleasing to God. God, if your music content is not pleasing to God, then you are not pleasing to God. How, how could your music content not be pleasing to God, but you are? 
everything I'm listening to. I'm mean, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to the Jay-Z concert. If you think Jesus is coming back and taking you and you're in the middle of the Jay-Z concert, singing and, and rapping everything that's going on, you got another thing coming. Because you're not pleasing to God. You think you're going you think you're gonna bump that and then be be raptured up. Oh, hallelujah. And you just been you just been even even if you you just been allowing to go into your head every nasty thing that somebody could think of and put on a record. It's okay, it's, okay. it's just it's just music. Philippians 4 and 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thought on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Does your music content that you expose yourself to put your mind in a thought process Hallelujah, that is, is excellent and worthy of praising God. Your music should leave your thoughts in this matter. To leave us thinking about what's worthy of praise. Music was meant for God. How do I know that? Because man was meant for God. Music was meant for God because man was meant for God. And and, 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 and and music was meant to glorify God because man was meant to glorify God. Anything else is a deviation from what God wants. And if you go on to the deviated trail, you're not doing what God wants. The creativity needed to make music or even to sing music was given to everybody by God for God. I understand, I understand. This is this one of the things that, 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 that had me twisted up and bound for a long time. Y'all know something come on and you go, boom! That's my, that's my chant, that's my song, that's my, When you hear the music. But, but I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It was my song when I was not connected to God. It was my jam when I didn't love him. When I wasn't serving him. And when I wasn't submitted to him. How can it elicit the same response from me now. How can I allow it to get from me what it got from me when I didn't serve him? How could it make me go on a place on the dance floor with people who don't love him and now there's no separation between me and them? How can I allow it to do that? Because I'm not thinking about God, I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about what makes me happy. And guess what? You didn't need to, you didn't need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to do what makes you happy. When you did it, you agreed to do what pleases God. Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3 and 16. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. There is no, 
There, there is no uh, uh, time limit on that. There is no, you know, until you cut on 103 or, or 93.1. What comes out of you should always be uh, uh, something that you want to praise God. And say, I know people want to say, well, what about, what about romantic music? Well, let's talk about it for a second. That romantic music inside marriage gives you something that's going to help you praise what God put together. Outside of marriage is going to make you lust. And you shouldn't even have no business with it. You don't have no business with it as a Christian, as a believer. You don't have no business with something that's going to make you lust and want something you can't have outside of marriage. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. The word, the word of God never gives us permission to use our musical gifts and talents in the world. Or, or, or even listen to music that does not glorify God. We assume consent on our own. We come up with, 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 with false arguments to try to convince ourselves it's okay. I'll listen to the bleeped out version. It don't make a difference. You already listened to the real version. You know what it's saying before it get bleeped. Your mind puts in the bleeped word. They may didn't say it, but your mind, your mind thought it. Because you already know it. You assume consent. In James 3, 8 to 10, the Bible says no one can tame the tongue. It's, it, it's restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord the Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Sometimes we come to church and we praise in God, and then we go home or, or go in the car, whatever, and we curse him. Or we're saying, we're saying things that are detrimental. All kind of nastiness and vulgarity in, in the music, and we got it pumping in our Christian car that we thank God for getting us. The Bible says, and so blessings and curses come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Well, Pastor, that's just talking about you talking. No, it's like coming out of the mouth. That's talking, singing. Is that what coming out of the mouth? God uses music. God uses music as a way to show our submission to him. But it's not just in church. It's all the time. Why? Because guess what? I need this ankle healed. And I can't just be praying to God in church. I just can't be listening, lifting him up. In church, but at home, I'm 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 listening to everything else, any kind of thing, any kind of thing else. And that all that, that, but but Lord, I need your I need your help right now. I need you. I need I need you to come work fast and, and in a hurry in me. But but my devotion to you is only temporary. Look at Ephesians 5, 18 and 20. Don't be drunk with wine, but, but because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you be filled with the Holy Spirit? It tells you in verse 19, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making uh, uh, make among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Music and the singing that goes along with it is the way to be and stay filled with the Spirit. And so the Word of God does not give us free reign to sing any other, anything other than the music that pleases God in order for us to be filled with God's Spirit. And you need to be filled with God's Spirit in order to operate in this world. You need to be filled with God's Spirit in order to apply the Word of God to your life. You need to be filled with God's spirit and that comes from singing things that are pleasing to God and his spirit. Well, what if you're not singing things that are 
pleasing to God and his spirit. Well, guess what? Your feeling starts to dissipate. Because you're not filling yourself with that, so you're filling yourself up with something else. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The devil knows that music and singing can fill you with the spirit of God, and he also knows that it can fill you with another spirit. Anybody ever put some music on to get their confidence up? Well, I gotta listen. I gotta listen to this. I gotta listen. I, I need to. I need. I, I need to get my frame of mind changed. So I'm gonna listen to this. I got to get ready. I don't need to listen to no hallelujah, nothing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna listen to this. I need to get pumped up. It's filling you with a spirit. Filling you up with something. You you trying to get you know there's liquid courage and then there's that you know that alcohol. You fill yourself up with that, but you also can fill yourself up with with with, with, with this this music that begins to put in you. Oh, praise the Lord, Hallelujah! It represents the evil that's in this world. There's music that represents a spirit that represents the evil in this world. This music is full of, of, of vulgarity, lust, perversion, degrading. And we used to, we, that, 10 years ago, they would be like, man, look, 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 they, they putting up a sign. That's a demonic sign. And you'd be like, oh, that ain't a demonic sign. Now they just got the devil on the album. You look at the award ceremony, they ain't even, they not even, they don't even care. They got, just so you know it's the devil, I, they got somebody red with horns. On prime time, that they worship. Well, I'm just not going to sing that song, but you know, I'm going to sing the other song that they sing. Really? The same one that's, that's, that, that got a demonic song, you say, well, I, don't, I ain't going to sing that one because it's demonic. But I'm going to sing all the other mess the devil gave you. It's time for us to take a side. you got to take a side. You can't not continue to call yourself a Christian but support demonic stuff. You can't. You, I, I, and here, and not expect God to bless you. And you can keep doing it, but you got to understand your lifestyle is, is, is being witnessed by God. Oh, praise the Lord. Blatant satanic worship. Idols. I mean, they got their own, their own covers and they're, they're, they're positioning themselves as, 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 as gods and goddesses on their, on their album covers. They're letting you know that they're they're connected to Satan. Some of them have let you know in their song that I that that I have given my my life to Satan. I give my soul. I mean, we know about it, and we and we don't care. We don't even do any research. We just say I like God. I don't care what you think. But I'm still a believer. See, that's the, that's the reason why Jesus said, many of you are going to say, I did this and I did this. And he's going to say, I never knew you. I mean, really, if you can support that, I never knew you. How can you support that and say you love me? Then you're going to have to deal with, it, 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 you know, you're going to have to, everybody in here got to deal with God on an individual basis when that comes. But you're going to have to justify that. And there's no justification for it. Because, you know, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to, to, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. Your mouth sings the corrupt songs that you listen to. The corruptness that comes out of your mouth based upon the songs that you sing that do not glorify God is the corruptness that is coming out of your mouth. 
And we don't think it's corrupt because it's tied to our youth. It's tied to what we like. I can't help what I like. Well, just ask the Holy Ghost, he'll help. You think everything about, here's the thing, you think everything about sin was something we didn't like? I don't know why the world feels, I mean, the, the world or, 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 the, or even the church try to let, make us believe everything about sin, it was stuff we didn't like. Oh, no, no, it, 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 it was some sin that we did like, but we knew it wasn't good for us. And we had to stop. Stop telling people that lie that, that you know, that all sin you didn't like and, 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 you know, that's why you stop. No, that's why you need Holy Ghost power because that stuff is still coming at you. And just like drinking and smoking and, and, and getting high with stuff we, we you can't do no more because it, it might have been stuff that was pleasing to your body and sex outside of marriage was pleasing to your body, you had to stop because it was against holiness. Well, so is listening to corrupt music. The, the Bible says the only thing that defiles you is what comes out of you. And guess how it gets in you? You put it in you based upon what you listen to, what you read. So if the music is not pleasing to God, by default, it's pleasing to the devil. See, we got to stop this it's middle ground stuff. Well, it's, it, you know, it's not, you know, the old church that had it right. It was, it was, it was God's music and worldly music. We try to, we try to make this middle ground. And, 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 you know, and, 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 you know, I was, I don't know where I'm from. I wanted to do this thing. I was with Elder Gamble, and we wanted, you know, he was talking about the Valentine's Day thing and, and the music we play. But Elder Gamble wanted everybody. I didn't want everybody. I just wanted Christian couples. That's all I wanted, Christian couples. Elder Gamble was like, no, we can, we can invite unsaved couples. We can invite couples that ain't married. We can invite, it's like, man, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work for what we wanted to work, what we want to do. But he that's what he wanted to do, and he wanted to do. And I, I, I didn't agree with that because I, you know, the things you can do with Christian married couples, again, that you can't do with unsaved people and unmarried couples. Just it, 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 you can't do it. You, you, you invite where I want to, where I want to invite in love. The only thing it's going to do to an unmarried couple, couple is going to invite in lust. So it's going to do. I mean, what's, why, why would I want to put them in a position where that's what it's going to do to them? Same thing for an unsaved couple. It's not, that's, that's not what we were trying to do. And, and so, and, you know, we're not, we're not doing that anymore. But, I mean, but that was my goal. My goal was to put us all in a position where we could do what God wants us to do inside the confines of a marriage. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So music is not pleasing to God. It, it, it by default, is pleasing to the devil. And, and, and it can be used to draw a believer to him to lower their resistance. Nowhere in the Bible is it more obvious than this in the book of Daniel. In Daniel, uh, 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 in, in, in chapter 3, the word of God said this. Then a herald shouted out people of all races. And it's still the same way. People of all races, nations, languages listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the, the, the lyre, the harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow down to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Be thrown into a fire. When you hear the music, bow down. They attached words to the music. To, 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 to pretty much when you didn't even have to say the words anymore, bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's golden idol. You didn't have to say that anymore. All you had to do is play the music. 
When you hear the music, bow down and worship. And that's all that's happening. That's all that is happening today. It hasn't changed. When you hear the music, bow down. When you hear the music, jump out here. When you hear the music, do what everybody else is doing. When you hear the music, don't worry about praising God. When you hear the music, bow down and worship. Now understand, we read Psalm 150. Psalm 150 was all about when you hear the music, you, we're worshiping God. We know the devil wants that, right? So the idol is not King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar is not saying, when you hear the music, bow down and worship me. King Nebuchadnezzar is saying, when you hear the music, bow down in this idol. This idol is representing devil. It's representing satanic influence. It's, it's representing a negative supernatural event. It's not to worship God. So now it's to worship another idol, which is not God. And what did God say? You are not to worship any other gods. That's the, God, that's the, that's the first commandment. And there are just, just I, some of y'all I ain't gonna tell you, do you do your own research. The idols and the and the, that are represented in some of these music and some of these videos and what they're doing, they are getting you to bow down to that. The covers. Action was required and outlined, and it was connected to the music. Fall down, worship me. And then in verse 7 it says, so at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or, or, or language, bow to the ground and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At the sound of the music, automatic bow. Mindless obedience to music. They were conditioned to, to, to react to what they heard, to bow down. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to drop down. First of all, but there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the providence of Babylon. They pay no attention to you. They pay no, no attention to your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Regardless of what the rest of the world was doing, they would not allow the music to dictate their actions. They would allow, not let the music affect their submission to God. I already made a determination that I'm going to be submitted to God. I now will no longer let the music change what I set up with God. You can understand. Is, is, is that what we do? Or when the music comes on, we really don't care. We, we come up with human reasoning and false arguments. It's not hurting anybody. Since when does submission to God or not submitting to God has to hurt somebody. My lie don't have to hurt nobody, but it's still wrong in the sight of God. My sin does not have to hurt none of y'all, but it doesn't make it stink any less in the sight of God. We use human reasoning and false arguments to try to get our way out of everything we want to do regardless of what God thinks. We know this says, then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage in order to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought, 
end, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true that you refuse to serve my God or worship the gold statue I have set up? I give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear, when you hear the sound of the musical issues. Why didn't the king just say, bow down? He's the king. Why is it so important that when I hear the music, I bow? Why is it so important that when I hear the music, I conform and do what the rest of the world is doing? Why? Because the devil knows that music belongs to God, and when you hear it, you bow to God. You worship God. And here, the king, who is the king, he... <laughs> He is more concerned about them bowing and worshiping an idol than bowing and worshiping him because that's what that devil has put in him. And he says, but if you refuse, you will be immediately thrown into the blazing fire. And then what God will you be able to what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Instantly pitting his God against God. This is not about, you gotta understand, even this was not about them bowing. This was about them uh, uh, not submitting to God and submitting to the rest of the world or to the devil or to the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the devil of the world, the enemy of the world, submitting to an idol that they, they know they can't uh, uh, submit to. That's the same with us. We have a God that we know every day, 24-7, we are to be submitted to. What's the key to life? Love God, obey God, and be totally committed to God. We learned that in Deuteronomy. Totally committed. You don't get a day off. You don't get a day off. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't want that. He didn't want to worship for himself. He wanted it for the devil. And all they did was reply. O King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. They had no problem giving him honor. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Your majesty, you want us to bow and say your majesty, God bless you. But, you know, but I'm not going to submit myself to your God. I'm not going to bow to your God. But I call you your majesty because you're the king. We will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. We will not serve your God. We will not worship him when we hear the music. Oh, hallelujah. They were able to resist the persuasion of the music based on who they had already submitted themselves to. The question becomes, who have you submitted yourself to? Because if you're not submitted to God, You'll listen to whatever you want to listen to. If you're not, if you're not totally convinced that God is control has control of everything that's happening in my life, then you'll do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do, as long as it pleases you. But when you start understanding that. I want God to be in my life 24-7. And God said, well, that's, that's great. I want, to be in, I want to be in your life 24-7 too. I want you to be with me 24-7. I want you to stop taking breaks from me and going with the world because it pleases you. I want you to live your life pleasing me. Why? Why? 
Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can't diligently seek God at the Beyonce concert. You can't diligently seek God uh, 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 following uh, Kanye West. Or you, you can't diligently seek God listening to, I don't even know all the names, but y'all know the names. And you, 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 you let me know if you can diligently seek God why you there. You can't. And if this thing was, and, and, and if this life was a life that I can cut on and off, and I knew for sure you could, I'd be the first one to cut it off. I'd be the first one to cut it off. But the Bible said I can cut it off and I can, I can you know, I can do whatever I want to do for 12 hours. And then 12 hours, I get back on this thing. You can't do that. Because you don't get the Bible doesn't say you can do that. The only one to say you can do that is you. And I'll be careful about listening to you because you're the one that got yourself in all the trouble you have ever been in. It's been you. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You have been listening to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. We pray that this word takes root in your life.